Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with a Q&A. I asked on my YouTube like feed thing, I don't even know how it comes up, but I asked for questions, baby related, pregnancy related, mum life related, whatever you want to ask. Um, and a lot of them came back as like a baby related question. So um, I'm probably just going to put this as like a pregnancy Q&A again. <clears throat> this will be my last one, which I can't quite believe when I'm filming this. I'm just over 36 weeks pregnant. And the fact that I could be giving birth in like two weeks time makes me feel a little bit ill as to how fast the time has gone. Um, I have written out all the questions in my notepad because I clearly have too much time on my hands and I had to go through my other Q&A and work out what questions were duplicate because I can't remember what I answered last time. So it's going to be quite a long one I can imagine because you all know I love to ramble so I would pause the video, go and get a snack, <clears throat> a cup of tea. I have actually got myself my um, raspberry leaf tea which smells okay and then when you drink it it just tastes like soil it's absolutely repulsive but I can't not take it because my birth with pee was so textbook that if I have a horrific birth this time and I don't drink my tea I'm gonna blame it on not having the tea so I'm like forcing two cups down my throat a day and it's just it's just not an enjoyable time but um, I've had loads of tips to be like, let it go cold and then drink it. So uh, if you don't know what raspberry leaf tea is, it's like, it's tea, I assume, from made from raspberry leaves. I don't know if that's accurate. And it's supposed to like help birth or help postpartum, help something to do with pregnancy, so I take it. You can get capsules and stuff, but I have the tea bags. Anyway, first question is, have we decided on a name? So if you watched my baby names video, you will know that oh, at that time we really struggled to think of a name or agree on one. And when I say agree on one, basically just get Neil to agree to any female name. Um, we are now at the point where we have got a first name. Obviously, I'm not going to share it in this video. Um, yes, we have got a first name. Middle name, we are still struggling. I'm not struggling. Neil's still struggling to come round to the idea of certain middle names. Um, I have been trying for not even months not even since i've been pregnant i have just been trying for the name martha for years martha was my name for p he hated it so i settled obviously with <coughs> p phoebe whatever you want to call her um and the whole time like before i even fell pregnant i was like i still really like the name martha like if we have a baby girl can we call it martha nope Fell pregnant, found out it was another girl, have been gunning for Martha from day one and he's still completely adamant against it. It's not going to happen. I've tried names along the same sort of line. It's not going to happen. Like, I, it just frustrates me because I love the name so much. And I sit there and I say, you never introduce yourself. Like, my name, for example, is Jessica Victoria. If someone asks me what my name is, I don't say it's Jessica Victoria. I just say my name's Jess. Like, you never really use your middle name unless it's like a legal document or something like that. So I don't understand why he's so adamant that it can't be the middle name. If I got my way, it would be. But he's not going to budge. <coughs> Apparently I'm losing my voice today. Um, so, first name we've decided. It was sort of one where I liked it. I haven't obviously mentioned it in any videos. Um... And he was like, no. And it, it's grown on him like Phoebe did. Um, but middle names, I haven't got a clue. And I've had some people say, just don't have one. I want a middle name. I don't want one child to have one and then the second not to have one. We'll get there eventually. I don't know what it'll be. But yes, we have decided on the first name. Speaking of names, um, another question that I got was, will I change my YouTube name? Um... I don't really know if I'm being perfectly honest. I never refer to myself as my YouTube name. My YouTube channel doesn't ever come up in conversation in real life anyway. I don't get brand work. Um, I don't do ads. I don't get gifted stuff. 
so I don't really think it's relevant if I change it or not. I never say like, oh, my name's Jess and I have the YouTube channel Phoebe and Me. Like it just, it's not, like it's not even a thought in my head. Like I never even use my name apart from like at the end of my videos or like in the intro or whatever. Like it's just, it's just what it is. Um, I know a lot of people have changed like their channel name to be like more professional and things like that. I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I don't really care, it's not a thought of mine. I don't feel the urge. Just like there's a girl that I used to follow, I don't follow her anymore. And I think she still kept her YouTube name um, as Lucy and the Bump. And she, I think her son is now six and she's never changed it. Um, so it's just one of those things that my channel name is what it is and I don't really feel like it's necessary to change it. If I feel like later on in the like down the line that I need to do it or I want to do it, then I will. But for now, it's just going to stay as it is. Where do I see us in five years' time? That's a, a quite a big question. So P will be nine, turning ten. The baby will be like four and a half, turning five. Uh, Neil will be. 36. I will be 31. Oh, I'll be in my 30s. Uh, five years. So the baby would be starting school that September. I, if I'm being perfectly honest, probably as we are now. Neil will still be working where he's working. He's been there 15 years. I've been there since 2013. So what's that? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 had a like year or so off so I've been there like say five to seven years it's varied throughout the time so I'll probably still be where I am I'm just I'm not a very like ambitious person like I'm just very content with what we have and I make the most of the situation that we're in um I don't know if that's bad the fact that I'm not striving for more but I'm just so content so probably still working what I'm doing I don't think much will change in five years. I'd like to think we'd have some savings for a house, potentially buy this house in five years. That would be nice. Um, I don't know if that is a possibility. We will definitely still be renting, but whether our landlord will eventually sell to us or not, I don't know. I think we'll get first dibs. Um, so it'll be nice to potentially get on the property market. But other than that, I don't think we'll be any further forward than what we are. It would be nice to have like a newer car and potentially a little bit of like money in the bank. But other than that, my feline, hopefully my feline will still be here. We might have another cat in five years time. I've said that I'd like to get another feline just because I love them. Right, well, that was a fail of a jump. Come here, come on, you stupid girl. Hey, what did you do? You fell off. Um, I have said that I'd love to have another cat at some point just because when when this one passes away I I couldn't get another cat because it would be replacing her so if I get another one before she dies then it's not replacing her but we're not going to talk about death are we because you are going to live forever and I need to get you the philosopher's stone so you don't pass away because you're just life in a cat isn't that right? How I cope with being pregnant and still go to work? Um, this came from a uh, girl that hasn't had children. <laughs> so I think the simple answer, and I don't want to come across as sarky, is you just get on with it like it is what it is. Every woman potentially deals with going to work, being pregnant. I couldn't imagine being pregnant in a retail job, like having to stand on my feet for like eight, nine hours or however long the shift is. I couldn't imagine that because that would really take a toll on like your body. Um, or like being pregnant doing like a physical job, like I couldn't imagine that. I'm very lucky where when I do go to work at weekends, like it's a desk job and I sit down and it's, it's relatively easy. I still get aches and pains just sitting down. And then obviously I do my cleaning, which I guess is a physical job. And having said that, I come home from cleaning a couple of times in the over the weekend and I'm absolutely done in. But you don't have a choice. You just have to crack on and get on with it. And it's the same like I've had people say, like, how are you coping like being a mum and, and being pregnant? Again, I don't have a choice. You don't just 
put your life on hold because you're carrying a child. Like everything in the world still evolves or still revolves. No, what's the saying? Don't know. The world still moves even though you're pregnant. Like life doesn't stop and it's hard but you get on with it. The light's at the end of the tunnel. I'm almost done. And you don't have a choice. You don't you don't even have time to sit and think about it. Like I've said previously in my videos, like the fact I'm 36 weeks pregnant, like I'm almost done. Like I'm all, I'm a week or well not even now. I'm like a couple of days from being full term. Like that's not okay and it's <clears throat> it's flown by, but you don't have time to think about it because you're constantly on the go with work, family, friends, being a mum every day, like getting up doing a school run, play dates and midwife appointments and hospital appointments like you just don't have time to sit and think about it um so yeah i i don't know how i cope i, d I don't really mentally but i'm i'm through it and i have so unfortunately i can't really give much advice on that i'd like to say you can sit on your ass for nine months and watch netflix but that doesn't work like that a couple of questions about like baby related stuff as in like items so the first one is will i be buying a new travel system slash push chair uh, this one was asked a couple of times and i don't really know why why it's an interesting topic um i will not be and haven't brought anything new or felt the urge to replace something because i'm having another baby if that makes sense i am reusing everything because you use it for such a small amount of time that I don't see the point. I think I've said it previously, Ellie was like, this is going to be my last baby, so I want everything brand new again. So it's like, fine, you do you. Whereas for me, I am so like, not that it's wasteful, but at the same time, I'm so aware of, like, I don't need to replace anything because everything is perfectly fine and barely used anyway. So my travel system was from mother care r.i.p mother care it's a beautiful chassis it's rose gold with a leather handle it's khaki green and i love it don't get me wrong it's a nightmare to push it's a three wheel and i wish i got a four um but i just got it because i liked the color um <laughs> So my travel system is absolutely fine. We've got the car seat that clicks onto it. A lot of people are like, oh my God, you don't use, um, what are they called? Like an ISO fix base? No, I don't. I like my, put my stuff works without the ISO fix. You just use the seat belts. I find it so much easier when I'm getting into people's cars or my own car. Like, especially like when family have pee, her car seat, like the bigger one, the Joey one, I think that's how you pronounce it, that's um, that's not an ISO fix one, it's just one that's done with a seat belt, but it's so much easier. I've had friends that have got an ISO fix base that are, they just can't get it into my car or a car because of like the angle and stuff, whereas mine can go in anyone's car. So like, I'm not replacing any car seats. I'm not, I'm not replacing the travel system, I'm not replacing the push chair, the bouncer, the walker, the jumper -roo. like I just don't see the point, I've got it all, and it's all gender neutral anyway, so even if we were having a boy, I wouldn't have needed to have changed it, I just don't see the point, yeah okay, like there's so many different options out there now, like it's five years since I brought all the stuff, but I don't need to. I might potentially replace the push chair. So when the baby goes out of the travel system and goes into a push chair, if I can find one on a good deal, then I might replace that just because the Silver Cross like stroller has obviously had a lot of use and is very like well loved. But then again, it's gonna get battered. Like I'd rather just run this one into the ground and then donate it to charity or just put it in the bin or give it to someone for free um, as opposed to just spending money that we don't need to spend like i just can't justify wasting money so no we won't be buying a new travel system or anything else the only thing that i've got that's i want to say new which isn't even new it's second hand um is a swing that's like electronic so it swings backwards and forwards that's the only thing i've got yeah everything else is reused from when we happy so again with like baby items another question was what big items will we be using so again i don't really understand the question 
all the stuff that comes with having a baby. So obviously you've got the push chair, the prep machine, steriliser, uh, a baby bouncer, a baby swing, Moses basket, next to me crib. What else comes with a baby? Like babies just come with so much stuff. We were, getting it, we were getting it, we were getting it all out of the attic the other day and it was like, oh you need this, oh you need this and I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, you need the specialised bath seat and God knows what else and I, like, my hallway was full and I was like, this baby is literally like going to be like the size of my hands and just stuff just kept coming out um, <clears throat> so all just like the usual generic stuff I guess that you, that comes with having a baby uh, and then I think eventually, once we've then finished with it, we're going to put it in an area, whether it'll be conservatory, garage, shed, attic, God knows where, we'll find somewhere. I'm going to do like a mum sale. So the sales that I go to, I'm just going to try and sell some stuff on Facebook to get a little bit of more money. Um, and then if it doesn't sell, I'm going to do a mum sale and just get rid. So probably this time next year, I'll get rid of all the baby stuff and it'll be gone and then my attic should hopefully be a little bit clearer we can have some sort of organization i had a question about that about the organization in my attic and would i film it no um there is no organization up in that attic at the moment i can't get up there and lift things and move things around obviously in my state at the moment um so that's neil's domain and i give him something to go into the attic and he just launches it and then he gets aggy at me because he can't then can't find it so um there will be no organization video currently give it a year or so and i'll sit down or stand up somehow film something up there like going through it all um and trying to restore some organization but currently there's i can't like i can't even move up there we need to get some more like loft boards and stuff so that'll be coming give it a year like i said um, and then we can <laughs> hopefully do that video. Um, what was your favourite baby product with P and what was the worst? <sighs> I honestly don't know. What was my favourite baby product? I don't, it was it's like four and a half, five years ago. Like I honestly couldn't tell you what my favourite was. A dummy because it keeps them quiet. Um, <laughs> Oh, what was my favourite? I don't think I had one, you know. I just think, I just, I loved all of her clothes. I loved all of her baby grows. I know it's not a product, but I loved all of her clothes. Um, product. I don't have one. I don't look back on that time and think, oh, I could not have got through life without that. Because it all just comes part and parcel. You just need it all. Um, the worst, just because of sleep deprivation, was you and the dream sheep. He's actually sat just off, I don't know if you can see that little cream thing there, Ewan. I hate Ewan. I hate him so much because it reminds me of night feeds and my child not sleeping. And it was a very dark time. I used to have to strap Ewan onto my bra strap. <laughs> and P was the type of baby that would not self-settle so she'd take ages to feed um I'm talking maybe like an hour for like four ounces um and then she would take ages to wind I'd say like the whole feeding winding changing process took at least an hour hour and a half potentially two um and then I'd have to rock her to sleep so I remember attaching you and the dream sheep to my bra strap walking around in my bra and my knickers with this newborn rocking her to sleep with this stupid if you don't know what you and the dream sheep is he has four little feet ironically he has four feet and on each of the feet there are a button to press for like white noise a, the worst lullaby you can like little twinkly like imagine like a like a little jewelry box music like sound that and i had that in my lug hole whilst trying to bounce this baby to sleep wasn't an enjoyable time i've just realized i need to get the, the baby carrier out as well i need to get the papoose out i need to put that on my list um yeah so like trying to rock her to sleep whilst 
basically falling asleep myself. I hated him. I hated him so much. I don't even know why I've got him down from the attic. Um, and to go alongside that, the grow light. So I think, is it Grow Egg, the company? You get the Grow Egg for like all the temperature stuff. That stayed in the attic. I don't even know why you buy it. It's pointless. Uh, and then you've got the Grow Clock. And there's a thing called a Grow Light, which I do recommend. It's a very good product. I think they're like maybe 12 15 pounds you can get them on amazon it fits into your ceiling lights or a lamp they do like the screw fittings or the the push and twist i want to say it's bayonet um and you turn your light switch on and it's this weird like alien glow it's like a led light but it's not bright so it doesn't affect like your baby when you're feeding in the night so we used to like put our bedside lights on <laughs> And then we'd wonder why she took so long to fall asleep because we were obviously then stimulating her and she was wide awake and like wired. Um, so my brother-in-law actually got us this light that you fit into the, the ceiling, like I said, and you, you turn your light switch on once and then it, it comes on. And then to use your normal light, you like you do the switch twice. It's really smart and really clever. Uh, and we refer to that as the light of death because it was not an enjoyable time. I hated doing night feeds. It was horrific. It took so long. Um, so the You and the Dream Sheep <laughs> and the Light of Death, aka the Grow Light, are my worst items, but then actually quite good. They just take me back to a dark time and I'm not looking forward to going back to that dark time. I actually need to find my Light of Death and put it in my lamp. <laughs> I'm not, I can't, I'm so, so not looking forward to it. Okay, so I had, I had a comment that just said newborn routine, and then I had another comment that said, will you do a routine from day one? So I think newborn routine is like for me to film a newborn routine. Um, I'm not the type of person that does those types of videos. I don't know why. I think I did maybe like one morning routine, and that was it. Um, I just... I don't enjoy watching the content, so I'm not going to make it myself. I might pretend... The thing is, is that if I'm going to film, I'm going to film a day in the life, and within the day in the life, it's a routine of some aspect. Like, I've just uploaded, like, a... I think I, I called it, like, normal Tuesday, which technically is a Tuesday routine. I just haven't dedicated the video or titled it that. And what happens within that video is a routine of what happens on my Tuesdays. But I just don't specifically do like fancy shots and a voiceover and all of that. Like that's just not me. It's not my bag. It's not my style. So at some point you will see some sort of routine. But I'm not going to sit down and dedicate a video saying this is my newborn routine and this is what I do. Like I'm okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, so eventually you will see life as it it is or with a baby but it won't be specified as a like a newborn routine and the other question of will I do a newborn will I do a routine from day one um, I think it's quite hard to do one from day one because we are going to be learning a lot it, obviously it's been four and a half years since we would have had a newborn so it's that shock of getting used to how many ounces sorting out like all the the milk and the learning how to do formula again and changing rank nappies and changing nappies in general like we haven't done nappies in like what two years i think pee's been like in knickers which blows my mind um dummies again baby cry like i don't feel like it's practical or even feasible doing a routine from day one I think the first two weeks of like paternity, obviously Neil will have two weeks statutory paternity, uh, which again is not enough time. The car, uh, just the whole paternity thing just really gets on my nerves. Why are they not entitled to their, like 90% of their wages? Why has it got to be such a small amount of money? And how does the government think that two weeks is enough time for a father to bond with their newborn and get stuff done? like? introduce a child to the like the whole family like it's just ridiculous but regardless i could rant about that for ages 
um, I think the first two weeks is like a very much like learning curve of how to parent <laughs> and we're also going to have that balance of how to parent whilst having a four and a half year old and school runs and all of that like oh so much fun we're going to have all of that to deal with so I think routine starts when Neil gets back to work because that is when a routine will be in play I think for us it'll be a bit longer just because if I'm if I give birth the week that I am due it works out that I will have the baby Neil will be off with the two weeks I will then have a week of doing a school run on my own and then we've got the Easter holidays so realistically I don't think we will be in like a proper dedicated routine of Neil goes to work, P goes to school three days a week, I've got the baby, like all of that stuff. I don't think that's going to start until like middle of April, like after Easter. But general feeding, learning routines are sort of all led by the baby and you just sort of figure it out. But we shall see. I am a routine person and I would like to think that I'd get on top of it quite quickly, but we'll see. What am I most scared about or excited for? <sighs> How long you got? Um, it's different second time. And I don't know what I've said in my updates and what I've said in real life, what I've said to my midwife, what I've said to my friends. Like my brain is completely fried. So I apologise if, if I'm repeating myself. Um, I, it's different second time round. With your first, you are so excited to meet this newborn baby because you've never done it before. You don't know what to expect. You see it through rose tinted glasses and you think, oh my God, I'm going to be a mum. Like, it's going to be so great. And I'm going to bounce back and I'm going to lose all the birth weight. And I'm going to go to coffee dates. I'm going to meet all these mums and blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Whereas second time round you know what to expect you know how how much it hurts when you wee and how much blood comes after birth and like the sleepless nights and all the daunting stuff that comes with childbirth like potentially tearing potentially having to have stitches um you don't you know roughly what to expect so it's terrifying the second time because it you've done it before <laughs> so it's it's scarier because you're not going into the unknown because you've done it if that makes sense um obviously i'm excited to meet the baby and to not be pregnant i'm so excited to be able to sleep on my back i'm now at the point in my pregnancy where I'm uncomfortable. When I was pregnant with P, I could have done another two months. Like I was fine, I was living my best life. Whereas now, I can't get comfy on either side. I miss being able to put my legs up to my chest when I'm sleeping on my side. I miss being able to sleep on my back. I miss being able just to get a full night's sleep and not have to wee. Um, so I'm looking forward to just like wearing a pair of jeans I'm looking forward to that. These are like all like the stupid things that's not related to the baby at all, but it's things I think about all the time. I am sick and tired of wearing leggings. Like I, I just, I'm so bored of it. I've been wearing them for like nine months. I'm so done with it. So I'm looking forward to like getting my, I don't want to say getting my body back because I don't care about how I look and stuff like that. I'm just looking forward to not wearing the same pregnancy uniform um, and just being able to be comfortable, I guess, and not feel like I need to go and wee every five minutes uh, and have an appetite. Like, I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, I'm looking forward to meeting the baby. I'm looking forward to seeing how P will interact with the baby. She loves kids. She loves babies. Uh, I don't know where she gets it from because I'm so, <laughs> it's really funny. Like people say, why are you having another one if you don't like babies? I just don't like other people's babies. I don't know what it is. I never have done. I'm afraid of other people's babies being sick near me, pooing near me. Like, no, I'm okay. If it's my own, it's fine. But other people's, I'm like, get a wipe, like stay away. <laughs> it's really bad. And I sound like an asshole, but that is me. Um, 
so I'm really looking forward to seeing what she's like with her own baby sister and it's like there's only nine months between Elliot, Ellie's second and obviously this one and seeing how P is with Elliot just makes my heart feel full because I'm so excited to see what she's like with her own. I know it's going to be different and I know we're going to go through lots of bumps in the road and it's going to be hard but I'm looking forward to that. What I'm most scared about is the shift, the dynamic shift that it will have on our family. It's why we didn't try for a second for such a long time because again like I've said I'm such a content person with my life. I'm scared as to how it's going to make everything change. It makes me scared about how my relationship's going to change because I feel like I don't see Neil as it is. He comes in, I go out to work, I barely see him at weekends because I'm at work or he's at work or whatever and it's like we tackle being parents together and it terrifies me the fact that we are then going to have another one in the mix and it's going to completely rock the dynamic and is Neil going to be really preoccupied with Pete? I'm going to be preoccupi preoccupied with the baby and we're not going to see each other. Like I'm, I'm really going to miss, I don't, I don't know if it'll change it, but if it, if it will, I'm going to miss like just how we are together. Um, it's like having to like be quiet in the bedroom, not in that respect in any way, shape or form, but just not being able to have like a conversation normally in bed about our day because there's going to be a newborn baby sleeping. We need to be quiet and stuff like that. Um, I'm not scared about it it's just one of those changes that happens and then you bounce back and everything goes back to normal but um, I am scared about how everything is just gonna shift and how I'm gonna do the school run like she starts school at half past eight but you learn you get there you figure out what works what doesn't work and you take the help that's offered to you and you just crack on like I don't have a choice but yeah I just say like how how life is gonna change and again it's the unknown of a different type it's not the unknown of birth it's the unknown of like the next shift and how P's going to find it is she going to regress like a lot of my friends children regressed when they had uh had their seconds but then again P's a lot older than what my friends were so I don't know um if I sit here and get in my head that's not a good place to be so I'm not going to sit and think about it for too much longer will I be vlogging when I go into labour um, I don't know. Short answer no, because uh, my thoughts and feelings on YouTube have changed a lot since I first started. I started, well, originally I started in 2009, so 11 years ago, Jesus Christ, I was what, 15? Um, so a lot has changed since then obviously but then when I came back after having pee um again a lot has changed I vlogged and overshared everything and there were no boundaries because vlogging still back then in 2015-16 it was still fairly new there wasn't really any boundaries and I don't know it's just it's changed so much I think and becoming a mother and learning things and being more aware again when you're a first time mum or just a like younger person you're so naive and there's obviously I've grown with age and knowledge like a fine wine um you just come more susceptible to the world and you see the world in a different light and you think oh I probably shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done this but it's out there for the world to see. And I don't really want everyone to see my machine, if I'm being perfectly honest. I don't think that sort of stuff's allowed on YouTube anyway. Um, I don't know how it's gonna go. Obviously, if I had a crystal ball, I'd love that. Um, I don't know the circumstances we're gonna be in. I don't know how fast it'll be. I don't know if it'll take all day. Like I have no, obviously it's childbirth. You have no clue. I would like to think that I will be able to film some sort of aspect, probably pre-birth, like me labouring and stuff. Um, whether I do anything with that footage and put that online or not, I don't know. I mainly want it for me, because I wish I did that with when I went into labour with P, just because it's 
it happens so fast, it's all like a hazy memory. And so sometimes I'll speak to Neil about birth, and he'll be like, oh, do you remember when this happened? And I was like, what are you talking about? That didn't happen. But I was so out of it and like in my head and in my bubble of, oh my God, I'm gonna give birth. Oh my God, I've, I can't, can't comprehend this right now. I'd like to like have those shots. And it's like, I've got clear images in my head of, <laughs> Like when I went into labour with P and Neil was sat on the toilet just eating mini cheddars and we was on the bath mat and it like I was labouring and I was pretty much ready to go and like get out we were just waiting for the hospital to call back and say like the room was free and he was like do you want a mini cheddar and I just looked at him and went fuck off like I don't want a mini cheddar I'm trying to labour right now like I remember that vividly and I'd love to have had like a, just a little two minute like this happened here and this happened there at some point so I can be like yes like, that's not your brain making it up um but when you're in the moment and when you're laboring you don't think about that sort of stuff and I was also completely naked and no one needs to see that so I don't know what will happen I'm not going to get Neil to be like don't hold my hand film me get the shot like I'm, I'm not that's just not me I'm not going to do that but I'd like to think I can get like snippets even if it makes like a two minute video for my channel or for my myself and my family then we'll see but I'm not going in like Sakoni Jolie style being like right here we go like set up the cameras I don't know if they do that or if they ever did that I feel like they did at some point um I'm not not going to do that no um but i will try and remember and do my best how am i planning on introducing p to the baby i don't know if i've said this or not i would ideally like p to meet the baby at home so if all goes according to plan um p will spend the night with ellie so if p's at school ellie will pick her up um and then she'll spend the night with ellie so whatever happens she'll have a night away um and I would like P to be able to, to meet the baby at home on our own where it's just us. So I'd like Neil to then go and pick P up, bring her home uh, and meet the baby where it's just us for. I don't want family members there. I don't want it to be too much pressure. I just want it to be just us and her to be in the moment and not have distractions and if she feels like it's too overwhelming and she's not ready to do that then she can go and watch telly or go and play in our room and then come and see us later on like I don't want there to be any pressure or any like distractions or anything I just want it to be what she's ready or what she's able to take um like you can talk to a child and try and like prepare them for like your baby sister's going to be here in like a month or like just before the, the easter bunny comes sort of thing like you can try and prepare them as much as you can but until they're in that situation she might feel completely overwhelmed and not want to see me she might suddenly get like a complete bout of like jealousy because mummy's busy i'm in pain i can't really move and i'm sat there feeding a baby she then might suddenly go really affectionate and want want me all the time I don't think she will because daddy's the favourite <laughs> um, but you just don't know so the ideal situation it'll be Ellie will get her ready and I, I saw Ellie yesterday and she was like um, have you got like the outfit in because obviously the pictures that you, you, you'll you take will be the ones that will go forever of like this is when P met her sister and it's like this is why Ellie's my best friend and basically like my sister because she thinks about things that I thought about how do you want her to do her hair thoughtful things like that it's like it's fine it'll be fine whatever happens if she has to meet in hospital then that'll be what it'll be um but hopefully it'll be in our home environment i'll be sat on the sofa neil will bring her home and that will be what it is i can't wait for that moment i can't imagine doing it like i can't i can see it now i can just see her little face coming in and like peeking out i can just make me want to cry just talking <laughs> thinking about it I can just see like her little face like peeking in and like being really quiet and like really coy um but I feel like it's going to be like a deja vu moment but we'll see I'm I'm really looking forward to it I just hope it goes well and I hope she doesn't I don't know I don't even know what to expect but yeah will we change P's bedtime routine um yes I think we will 
again it all depends on the baby and the situation and how it all will all pan out so P's current routine um is I do dinner for like five half five I sit down and I eat with her or Neil we all sit down together if Neil's home from work but his shift and like when he gets home it fluctuates all the time so it's never consistent whereas obviously I am um so we eat together Neil will come home and do like bath or shower because I I can't lean over at the moment and do that it's just too much um get her in her pajamas we watch an episode of whatever she wants to watch on the telly brush her hair brush her teeth read her a story and then she's normally in bed by seven and then she has books in bed to read to like 7 30 and then she just like drifts off to sleep whereas i think when the baby's here depending on the routine of the baby i would like to think i can't i don't know i'd like to think that say the baby will nap obviously this will be early stages but the baby will nap say whilst i'm doing like the bedtime routine for pee and then that will be like our time and I'll keep her up for probably until like half past seven because she does need to go to bed when she goes to bed she's tired she's ratty and she's not very nice at the end of the day she's ready for it but I think I'd it depends on her as well if she feels like she's ready to go to bed I'm not going to keep her up for the sake of it um but yeah she'll probably go to bed like half an hour later so then we can have more time like reading more books or watching a little bit more on the telly or just spending time with her doing something like that's obviously not going to keep her like hyper or whatever um so we'll see it is dependent everything's going to change anyway so i'm just going to work around everyone else and just see what works it's going to be trial and error for the next couple of months until we find a balance that works for us will you be going to baby groups this time i would i have the um the idea in my mind that I will. I didn't previously with P. I don't know why. Probably should have done because I was the first of all of my friends to have a baby. So it was very isolating in the first year. Uh, no one could relate. No one really understood. Um, and going through it on your own, it, it wasn't great. Um, I was too scared. Whereas this time, don't get me wrong, I think I'm going to be absolutely bricking it going to a, like a mother baby group and they're not me at all i'm not the type of person that sits and claps and sings to like a newborn that has no idea what's going on but i think for that interaction with other mums with babies of a similar age i might don't hold your breath i probably won't but i am going like open-minded thinking yeah like i'd like to find out about groups in my area i know so many have ch like shut down the amount of budget cuts that we've had since I had P is crazy um so I don't even know what's available anymore um but I will try to do baby groups I'm just looking forward to when P goes to school and making mum friends within like her class because at the moment with nursery there's so many children so many parents um and you don't know like you don't know who the who they are and it's very much like pick up your child go like there's no real like com like chance to communicate and like chat so i'm really looking forward to like when p goes to school maybe a couple of the mums will have new babies there and i might meet someone there i don't know i would like to like make some new mum friends with smaller children because again a lot of my friends now all of our children are going into the same school year now so i don't even see i rarely see anyone now um so it would be nice to get some new people like friendly and obviously have that interaction with their newborn and stuff like that but we'll see i will try my battery died just as i was going to wrap up uh, the video um my tea's cooled down and i need to down it but i really don't want to because it tastes so grim so oh it's horrible oh no um so that is all the questions i really hope you all enjoyed this chatty q a video it will be my last q a of me being pregnant which is crazy um 
I don't know when this video is going to go up. Baby might be here, might not, who knows. Not me. Um, so, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Sorry if it was quite long. That's what it is. I just love to chat. I can't help it. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.